beep, 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 beep. First, you take the cattle to the killing floor. Hey, hey everybody. It's ding dong. It's two o'clock central. Is it daylight time? Spring forward. Yeah. We're in, it's Central Daylight Time. It's 2 o'clock Central Daylight Time here in Houston, Texas. My name is Mike Myers, and this is the Mike Myers live stream Ask Mike Anything or AMA. The goal of this little live stream is to allow those of us who are isolated by the coronavirus an opportunity to continue our studies, primarily concentrating on CompTIA certifications, A+, Net+, and Security+. Now, we can certainly go outside of that on an as-needed basis, but... That's kind of, that's, that's the main part of our lane. So uh, that's where we tend to concentrate. So welcome aboard. Those of you who are studying, making a quick scan. Looks like the usual wacky crew is here. Mm. I need more monitors because I don't have enough monitors. Clearly need more. All right. So let's see who we got. Yeah, Zach's here. Joe Foy. Joe Foy. Is Joe Foy not the name of a soldier from the 101st Airborne Division of World War II? He was actually killed. Sorry, Joe. It was Band of Brothers. It was a television show, but he was a real character. So, hey, Joe. How's that for... <laughs> Let's say something really morbid the first time I meet somebody. Why not? Um, how's the cat? Uh, well, we do have a cat. Uh, Spewy is back. I don't know where she is. Somewhere spewing, no doubt. But uh, yeah, I am, I am, I am recatted again, at least uh, for a week. So we'll see what happens outside of that. Da -da -da -da, Deepak Pun. I've seen you, Deepak. Good to see you, man. Tolowit, of course, because it just it ain't it ain't an AMA without Tolowit there. E White, good. E White, good to see you again. Nigel, high desert gamer. He man. Crazy homebody girl, way to go, way to, good to see you again. Produce Boy 12. What? Actually, I have a legitimate question. Let's go right in. Or when you buy a motherboard, it comes with a CMOS battery, right? Yes. Uh, pretty much all of them do. It's a, here in the States, they're a CR2032. I can never remember the exact number for those. They're the watch style batteries. But they also have smaller ones too. Vista Chris. Look at that. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, Joe Foy at 201. Hey, Mike, I have a Network Plus exam tomorrow evening. Any advice or tips I can take with me? Yeah, Joe, relax. People laugh when I tell you that, but it's really important. Relax. Take it easy. Be good. People get all excited about, you know, stressing out over these exams. The number one reason people fail CompTIA exams is test anxiety. You need to be mellow. Trust your training materials. Clearly, you found me, so I guess you're using my stuff. Uh, I've helped millions of people pass CompTIA certification, so have confidence, and uh, you know you'll you'll do good. That's probably the most important thing I can tell you. A um, couple of things. Uh, first of all, guys, to ask me questions, just as you're seeing, if you, if you're not noticing, people are typing questions into the chat window, and so that's the place to type in your questions. If you're the shy type, and that's Fine, I get that all the time. Just feel free to send me an email directly. My email address is Michael M at totalsem.com. Just send me an email. And uh, I'm always glad to answer emails directly, especially if maybe if you have a more complicated question, something more personal or private, whatever it might be, feel free to just send me an email. If you're a gamer, uh, I'm Senor Pepe on Steam. And otherwise, I'm pretty much Desweds, D-E-S-W-E-D-S -E -E at just about everything. But that Michael M at totalsim.com is the best uh, email. CR2032. Thank you, Scott. Is that not what I said? I thought I said CR30. I said CR20. Well, I don't know what I said. But Scott Jernigan tells me it's a CR2032, and that sounds right. So I'm going to go with that. So Joe Foy, relax, man. That's the most important thing. Uh, <coughs> Georgie Genev. Can I get make the CompTIA A plus in Bulgaria? Uh... You know what, Georgie, I can look that up, but uh, I'm going to take advantage of uh, Scott Jernigan and uh, maybe Dave Rush, if you're on there. Can you guys double check on the Scott Jernigan? Please, please, please head over to the CompTIA website and verify if we can have it in 
uh, Bulgaria. I'll bet you can. There's very few countries. Oh, speak of the devil. Hello, kitty kitty. She's so deaf. <laughs> so hang on, Georgie. We'll get an answer for you here shortly. Uh, Caesar Rene, Re, Re, Reynoso, Reynoso. There we go. How can I get on track to start studying with you? Well, Caesar, you've done the first big step. You show up here. All right. So first thing, Caesar, is you're going to need study materials. Caesar, what do you want to study for? You learn, you want to do CompTIA A+, plus, IT Fundamentals, Network+, plus, Security+, plus. Why, what, what, what do you, uh, to start studying with me. So I, I teach many different things, uh, say Cesar. So tell me which one you want to talk about, and uh, we can talk about it together. So that would be the first thing. Uh, Secondly, you're going to need study materials. I always think most people need practice questions, um, practice questions, books, and videos. Uh, I make my living. I pay my mortgage uh, by making training materials and then selling them to people. Uh, so that, that's what I do for a living. Uh, I've been doing it now for almost 30 years. Um, so we sell these materials. Uh, uh, www.totalsem, T-O-T-A-L-S-E-M.com, just like my email. Uh, that's my website, and we sell these types of products. Uh, we also give them away. So if you show up every, whew, here come the ons again. If you show up every Monday and Wednesday, right here at 2 o'clock, Georgie, you pretty good chance you'll get free practice questions. If you just compete enough, we're always doing little competitions. And if you're a good competitor, then you'll, you'll win. Yeah, keep in mind, these are not very large groups. I get, at most, maybe I've had 100, 110 people a couple of times, but in general, it sits somewhere between as low as 40 and as high as about 70 people. So it's a small group. So when I do a giveaway or a competition, <laughs> you're not competing against very many people. So uh, stick around here, Caesar. That, that, I think that's your answer. Milos. Milos, your last name has three dots in it and an umlaut. Oof. But you are from Montenegro. Hey, man, weren't we just talking about Montenegro last week about something? Getting something delivered there or something? Frank, good to see you, Frank. Josh Dope, why do you think they call it Dope? Hello, Mike. My first server rack arrived today, and I'm starting my home lab. Well, Josh, pictures are it didn't happen, man. One more time, Josh. I always love seeing people's home setup. So Josh, please send me an email, take some pictures and shoot them over to me and let me know what I can show off. You know, so Josh, how many racks is this uh, server? How many U's is the server rack? Is it, is it floor to ceiling? Is it a wall mount? What do you got, Ben? Is it closed off? How do you cool it? You know, those are the fun things for me to talk about. And Josh, this is a great place to talk about that as well. Uh, also, do keep in mind, guys, that this starts at 2 o'clock uh, Central Daylight Time, and it runs till 4 o'clock or until the questions run out. So keep in mind, my goal for being here in front of you right now is to help you. You ask me questions, and I answer them, supported by my cast of thousands, who are many of them smarter than me, and uh, to help you continue to study. So that's what it's all about. So when the questions run out, I may do a competition or two, uh, but then we're out of here. All right. Uh, a couple of things, though, do keep in mind. Uh, I got to have this up. Just because you're nice enough to show up. Uh, uh, uh. Just because you're nice enough to show up, we have discounts on our products. So bu -bu -bu -bu, what do we got this week? Hang on. Okay, so this week, so everybody should have practice questions. It's important, okay? And we sell our practice questions as two separate products. We have the total SIMS, which are the performance-based questions. And then we have the total tester, which is the regular questions. Uh, we just do these separately because that's how we do it. Anyway, um, we're selling those at 50% off. So you get a... What we're selling this week are bundles where you buy both, like, say, the A-plus total tester and the A-plus total sims. 
So that is the whole product. Uh, so these things usually go for uh, 125 bucks. Uh, we are doing these for 50% off. So that's like $62, which I guarantee you makes me the cheapest of any test bank out there for good questions. I'm sure there's some other ones that are garbage, but um, God, that is ridiculously cheap. It's, it's crazy. Uh, anyway, if you want to take advantage of this deal, and this is good for like A plus and net plus, those would be the two biggies. Just to head over to www.totalsem.com, T-O-T-A-L-S-E-M.com. Guys, don't panic about writing all this down. Scott Jernigan's going to put it up in the chat window if he hasn't already. And um, go over to our merchant area, grab the bundles. And just before you hand us your credit card, type in the code STAMP, S-T-A-M-P, 1765, and you get 50% of all bundles this week. And that'll be good all week this week. So do take advantage of that. Uh, so that's good. Uh, also, do keep in mind that um, we have a Discord channel as well. Uh, I don't have a Discord channel. Oh, I get so tired of putting the same caveat in every time. Um, there is a Discord channel out there run by my buddy Jose, and uh, he's getting a cast of thousands working with him. Uh, this Discord channel uh, comes together uh, usually every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for live chat. However, it's a Discord channel, so it works all the time, 24-7. All you have to do, if you've got any questions or issues with your training or anything like that, just drop a question. And I may not even be the one to answer it. we got a lot of very, very smart people. This is a good group that you might want to consider being a part of um, so that uh, it will really is a good group of people to help you study. Uh, and again, Scott Jernigan will put all the information for the Discord channel straight into the chat window. So uh, I hope to see you guys there. So uh, by the way, uh, I will not be online on Wednesday. So I'm usually on Monday and Wednesdays. <sighs> you know, I do not walk around yawning all day. Uh, it's just something about getting in front of this camera. Maybe the way I'm talking or something. I don't know. Uh, bottom line is, is I will not be on this Wednesday. Uh, we have had a, 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 a death in the family due to COVID, and I'm going to have to be uh, heading over uh, to a uh, service. So unfortunately, guys, uh, the, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure Scott and Dave will be covering for me uh, on Wednesday, but I won't be here. Uh, so you only get me on today. That's it. Sorry. But uh, that is how are things going. What do we got going here? Yeah, Josh, I really want to see this server rack. I, mean, I want you to take some pictures and send them to me. Uh, uh, AJ... Devin Asavariant, oh, sorry, Jay, I'm mauling your last name. I'm sure I'm not the first person to do that. Hey, Mike, what's the difference between on-demand and rapid elasticity when it comes to cloud computing? There's not a lot of difference between the two. On-demand usually talks more about, on-demand is elasticity, but it's more of elasticity for spikes in demand. Whereas generically, when we talk about elasticity, that can mean, uh, like here in the United States, when we're playing a, a fo or American football, so when we're in the season, there might be sites that have a lot of demand, but when you're out of the season, then it goes back down. So a lot of times when you talk about elasticity, think about like an elastic band. It can be bigger, but it can also easily be smaller. So when we're talking about cloud, you say elasticity, you're talking about getting bigger, load, bringing up more uh, systems, or shrinking it down. Whereas on demand usually means uh, it's ready. If big demands spike up, a bunch of new machines can roll up for it. But honestly, and Jay, what I just described there is far more complicated than you would ever see on any CompTIA exam. Or I guess if we're talking about, I guess that could be, that could be probably network pluses, I guess. Edwin, is it normal for Windows to reserve RAM? <laughs> Yes, uh, RAM will steal in general. Uh, God, I don't have all the numbers in front of me anymore. I used to have all this in my brain. I don't remember. 
on a 32-bit system, on a 32-bit system, uh, it would be two gigabytes. But on 64-bit, I don't remember it. But yes, it's absolutely, it's called system, it's called system reserved. Uh, you can fire up task manager, you can actually see this. Why don't we do that? I'm always afraid to fire up task manager while I'm in the middle of a AMA, but let's see what happens. I'll just keep you on here though. Oh my goodness. It's been a while since I've done this. This is a good, good, good question. Good for my soul. <laughs> nope, that's not it. Bear with me, guys. Wow, I completely blew that. In use, available. I don't, it doesn't show what the system memory is using Task Manager. I'm going to have to look that up on 64-bit systems. Bottom line is absolutely uh, Windows reserves uh, a big chunk of your memory and it needs it. I mean, remember Windows itself is software, right? So it has to run. Um, Windows uh, needs memory. But it also needs to reserve memory for you know certain types of apps and things like that. So that that's yes. Take me a long time to say yes. And doggone it, I can't. A little frustrated me that I don't remember exactly how to get all my memory information up using Windows. I'm not using the right words here. Yeah, I'm gonna, I forget. I forget, moving on. Um, da -da -da -da. Ooh, lots of questions suddenly scrolled. Uh, Guillermo Moreno, Mike, DDR2, two, DDR2, three, and four are only, are only. Ah, okay, Guillermo, let me make your question better. Mike. What are the different types of DDR memory that I need to memorize for the CompTIA A plus exam? You need to do DDR2, DDR3, and DDR4. Don't bother with DDR5 or anything like that. Well, Scott Jernigan's telling me I need CPU ID. Now, Scott, the biggest problem is I always get in trouble and it's like, I forget the difference of like, say, commit charge versus all those things. That's why I'm a little avoided that. Uh, uh, looking at memory. Uh, da, 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 da. Nope, nope, nope. That's not what I need. Okay. Andre, sorry, Mike. I'm late. Had to put the kids to bed. Oh my God, Andre, you have you have progeny. That's terrifying. Mm. Hi, Desert Gamer. I am taking the 1001 in a couple of weeks. Only thing I am disliking is the remote testing thing. Yeah, a lot of people agree with you there, High Desert Gamer. There's also a few people who absolutely love it. Every introvert in the world can now just sit in their house and do things. I don't know how we're ever going to get back after this virus. It was so strange. I actually went out to dinner with some friends and an older guy my age and shook his hand. It's like, whoa, haven't done that for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, only thing I'm just like, yeah, so worried, so worried I do or say something and it is over. Look, High Desert Gamer, just be cool, you know? Uh, don't create drama in your head that isn't there, okay? Imagine that you are a proctor for an exam what would the things that somebody could do that make you nervous? And just don't do those. Uh, Guillermo Moreno, Mike, can you go over NAS, please? Is this on the 1001 or 1002? Ah! Scott Jernigan, please do me a favor. Is he on the 1001 or 1002? 
Nobody, did anybody answer your question about Bulgaria? I'm going to do that. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. It's no big deal. Yes, uh, just head over to WW. Okay, so who was ever asking about uh, training and testing for CompTIA? CompTIA is in Bulgaria. Uh, there is uh, for training, uh, New Horizons uh, is in Bulgaria. I don't have a address. Probably dig that up for you too. Uh, anyway, but do do CompTIA testing Bulgaria, and there's lots of information in here. Lots and lots of information. You absolutely can do it in Bulgaria. Right. Do do. Okay, Guillermo. So you want to go over NAS? Uh, it's not much to go over. You need to know what NAS is. It's Network Attached Storage. It's really easy. With Network Attached Storage, you, like you don't even need anything special. Imagine you could, technically you could set up an NAS box using just Windows, okay? So you set up a Windows system and you, you know, you got, you set up a RAID 5 array in there, okay? And then you create a network share. And then that network share hooks to everybody else, and all of a sudden everybody else has a Z drive or something like that. Uh, that that's an NAS. That's it. There's plenty of NAS. So you can buy pre-made NAS boxes. All you do is plug them into your Ethernet. Uh, most of them run versions of Linux. Uh, most of them are designed to set up RAID configurations nicely. But an NAS, Network Attached Storage, is always going to have a drive letter associated with whatever it's sharing. Most of these boxes run Samba for uh, file, pr file and print sharing. Um, sorry, I'm getting a lot of distracting things here. I apologize. Uh, Guillermo, you have my full attention. The important thing to remember about NAS, Guillermo, is when they compare it to a SAN, okay? So NAS is Network Attached Storage. A SAN is Storage Attached Networking. With a SAN, you don't add a drive letter. Like with a SAN, traditionally, with a SAN, you'll use works, you'll have workstations. A lot of them don't even have hard drives in them. You literally boot off of your network every time. So you think of SAN as like this huge storage area, and it'll cut out a C drive, bunk, right? And just let you boot Windows. Then it'll take a D drive and then let you put something in that way. SAN is very expensive, very powerful, uh, and it's enterprise only. You would never see SANs at home unless there's somebody who's very weird and very rich. Uh, but the important thing about a SAN is that SANs will bring in some chunk, and you can literally go into a SAN control and say, I need a six terabyte drive. And let's say you got a C drive on your computer. All of a sudden, boom, a D drive appears that's now six terabytes. Or a lot of times SANs are very popular because you'll have a lot of projects, okay? Imagine, so here's all these different book projects, say, all right? Man, maybe we need a SAN. Anyway, you have these different book projects. And if you want to work on something, like today at Total Seminars, if we work on stuff, we're like sharing Dropbox folders and stuff like that. But... Uh, in a local area network, you could have all these people just attach to a, uh, where you could, each people would pull, pull it down individually. SANs don't like to share a hard drive to more than one person at a time. Uh, but in that case, it, it, you just bring it down and do whatever you want with it. So that's the big difference of NAS versus SAN. <laughs> Nigel, Mike, I need you now more than ever. 
And I need you more than ever. Trying to get a job in cybersecurity or Python. Employers, recruiters are not fair, that's for sure. What the heck? Come on, Nigel. What aspect of life is fair? They expect too much, what do I do? Okay, well, Nigel, here we go. Nothing is ever good enough for recruiters. Nigel, here we go, you ready? Nigel, send me an email. The reason, Nigel, you're sending me an email is because I'm gonna give you my telephone number. And Nigel, you and I are gonna have a little conversation, my brother, we'll get you fixed up though. But Nigel, here, one more time, maybe I did that too fast. Nigel, this is for you, Michael M at totalsem.com. Say, just Mike, it's Nigel from the AMA. I asked the question about, uh, I asked the question about not being able to get a job. Help me. Need you more than that. Now you got that song in my brain. Thanks, Nigel. Love is like a fire that had given us sparks. Ah, Nigel, I hate you forever. Um, Caesar Reynoso, there he is. How do I set, now, see, Caesar, here in Houston, Texas, well, you know, se habla espanol, you know what I mean? So it'd be Cesar Reynoso. So I hope I'm saying it the right way. I don't mean to maul people's names. How do I set myself up for self-studies? Cesar, first, pull out your wallet. <laughs> All right. Number one, choose what you want to self-study for. What, what, what do you want to study for? Do you want to be CompTIA A+. What do you want to be? What's your passion? Who are you? All right, I, so it's hard for me to answer. Let's just say you want to get A plus, Cesar, just so we have a place to begin this conversation. Number one, everybody needs practice questions, everybody needs videos, everybody needs a book. I have discovered that if somebody who's relatively competent can at least have these three products in their hands of a good quality trainer, <laughs> You, we have very, very high success rates in the area of 90% plus first attempts, okay? Does that mean you're gonna have no problem? No, I don't know you, I don't know you. But anyway, so you have practice questions, which are usually online. You have a physical book of some kind, right? And then uh, you have videos. So uh, you can get all this from me but to be honest with you, especially like videos, you should check out Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y.com, or you should check out Linda, L-Y-N-D-A.com. In fact, you should probably check out Linda.com because they've got a special going right now that's ridiculous. Uh, sorry, Scott, timestamp for Nigel was, uh, two, uh, for Caesars, 2.05 p.m. Um, so then, uh, Cesar, what you have to do is you have to decide what kind of studier you are. Everybody's different. Some people like to watch videos. That's the first thing. Just watch a video, watch chapter one. Most of my videos are broken up that follow my books. Not perfectly, but quite close. And you watch a video for chapter one. There you go. And then, uh, then maybe you read a little bit. And then you do some practice questions. My practice questions, you can do them by chapter, whatever you want to do. So that's one way to do it. Some people like to read. First thing they want to do is just sit here and read the whole book. Go for it. Read the book. Everybody has different study methodologies. Maybe you're what you call a kinesthetic. You're the person who likes to touch stuff. So you might be the type of person who likes watching videos, but at the same token, you're probably going to have a piece of equipment in front of you and you're pausing the video all the time where, oh, look at it, oh. Whoops, missed a button. Um, looking at, say, video cards or RAMs, you can look at it. Everybody's different. What's important is, to me more than anything else, number one, once you get your study materials, the second thing you need to do is you need to go over to uh, CompTIA and uh, register, or OnView, O-N-V-U-E, Scott, help me out, onview.org, uh, I'll look that up too. Hmm. On view.net? No. On view.com? Yes. So go to onvue.com and you can go ahead and register for the exams. So again, but Caesar, I don't know what you're studying for. But let's just say you're doing A. A is two exams. 
So with that one, you pull out your wallet and you set a date. And you set a date, usually 30, well, I'm not sorry. You'd have to be really good for 30. 60, 120, even 180 days in the future. But you schedule your exams for the future because if you don't schedule your exams, then you won't study because let's face it, we're all nerds and we're basically very, very lazy people. Um, so you set that time in the future and then you just study and then you pass. That's all you gotta do. Cesar, if you got more questions than that, uh, well, keep posting here is fine too. But then equally on top of that, Oh, here we go, Cesar Reynosa. A plus, network plus, eventually get to CCNA. Great. I think A plus, net plus, CCNA is a excellent uh, pathway to take. If you're ever gonna get into Cisco, you sh always should take the network plus because it's the only time you'll get to learn about networking where it's vendor neutral. Uh, after that, it's everybody. Mm -mm -mm. Nigel at 205, nothing is ever good for recruiters and employers. Ah, that's, people are negotiating, Nigel, it's all right. People are negotiating, when people negotiate with me, you can't get mad, you know, you just, you know, work the deal, that's what I always say. There's Elbow. Patricia Grace. Hey, Patricia. Yeah, Gruber. Somebody get Micah's coffee. Gruber, I don't know why uh, I yawn. The moment I sit down in this chair, I start to yawn and my nose starts to itch uncontrollably. And I've gone through all of this rigmarole. Like if I was going to be doing like a video series, you know, I could go do, but hey, it's just us. I'm, I'm, I don't panic quite so much about it, but you're right. That's an issue. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Lots of high is. 207, Frank, hey, just passed security plus five minutes ago. Jeez, Frank. <laughs> 793, that's uh, uh, 207 p.m. Frank, just passed the security plus five minutes ago. First of all, Frank, big round of applause to you. Well done, sir, get a job. Um, score 793, that's probably one of the top 10 highest scores I've ever seen on a security plus. The total test was great to have. You're part of me now, and I'm part of you, Frank. I'm goofing. But seriously, though, Frank, congratulations to you. Well, well done, sir. Uh, the Security Plus. So, Frank, did you take the 501? I hope you took the 501. Uh, if you took the 601 with my 501 training, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, 208, new name, CSS Freelance. Cascading Style Sheets Freelancer, all right. I wanna thank you for your study material on CompTA Plus. You're welcome, CSS Franks, sir or ma'am. Is your videos and simulations have helped me? Okay, very good, yeah. well, thank you, CSS. Stick around, man, well, just because CSS Freelance gave me such a nice compliment, we'll throw in at least two competitions today. How's that grab you kids? All right, hang on, let me. <sighs> Sorry, kids. <laughs> Nigel at 208. Mike, is it possible to be an entrepreneur in, in IT? Even though IT is very technical, yes. Good Lord, Nigel, come on. Look at all. <laughs> I think IT, especially with the, uh, no, that was about to be a lie. I think IT as a industry has probably created more entrepreneurs than any other industry in the history of mankind, other than maybe lemonade. Um, yes, I'm an entrepreneur, I mean, I decided to start a computer training company back in 1995. Uh, business has never been better. I have a, uh, a cousin of mine who lives in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and there are so many help wanted signs out there right now at all these different levels that it's crazy, just crazy. The amount of work that's available, 
Here, here in Houston, Texas, there's tons of work, but I'm digressing. Entrepreneurism, the only thing I'm gonna tell you about entrepreneurism is the only reason to be an entrepreneur, the only reason, and I know this is a very unpopular thing to say today, but the only reason to be an entrepreneur is because you think you're gonna become a multimillionaire. It's just too hard of work. There's a reason why the vast majority of us are not entrepreneurs. There's a reason why most of us just want to work for a good company with a good health plan is because, you know, you want something predictable in your life. You don't like the ups and downs, the roller coaster, the stomach ache. And if I told you guys some of the garbage I go through on a daily basis, you, you'd be shocked. Um, it's hard work. I, I, when, when I started Total Seminars, I went almost two years without an income. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. But, you know, and, and justifies the means, da, 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 da. And, you know, and, and being an entrepreneur is risky. It's, it's, you, you can lose every penny you have. I have a very dear friend of mine who w worked at, uh, in a very large uh, computer company, decided to become an entrepreneur, and literally lost everything. Everything. And that's a tough one, you know? It's always easy. It always surprises people are like, ah. Oh these evil millionaires and look at all this stuff, but they don't talk about all the guys who tried and failed and you know put in 120 hours a week because that's what you're gonna do. If you wanna work hard, be an entrepreneur. The worst part about being an entrepreneur is that your boss is a jerk. So yeah, don't get me started, Nigel. The answer is not only is it possible, it's probably the best place to become an entrepreneur. But do be aware, that uh, there's a lot of risk. Oh, here goes Frank giving us some input. Yeah, it's all drag and drops for those types of uh, performance-based questions, pretty common. Uh, 210, Eric Killingsworth, hi Mike. I bought your 220101, 220101 goes on Udemy and started studying 31, took my very service and passed with about 85%. Thank you. Hey, Eric, first of all, congratulations to you. Well done. Go get a job. Uh, but, na, na, na. yeah, ooh, Eric, Eric, I'm reading your second post. For uh, Thank you so much for what you do. I know your job. I know this is your job. Yeah, it's, it's my passion. It is. If I could do this for free, I would. But unfortunately, my car note and my doctor, my expensive United States health insurance and all that, kind of, I need income. I got to pay for amazing people like Scott Jernigan and Dave Rush. Do you think amazing people like Scott Jernigan grow on trees? Well, they actually do grow on trees. So. Yeah. See, I told you, Scott, I call you a vegetable. There you go. I knew it was going to come out eventually. But thank you, Eric. I really appreciate the kind words. And I, I, I'm glad to see you're passionate. Anytime someone says the word passionate, that makes me smile, smile, smile. Uh, Eric Kellingworth, I wish I could shake your hand. I start Net Plus this week and look forward to it. So I've been thinking about, uh, I can't do this for everybody. It's one of these unfair competitions. You know, especially once the COVID knocks back. I would love to fly a couple of you guys down to Texas and uh, spend a week on me. The problem is if you're in Bulgaria or Monte Montenegro, it might be hard. Uh, if you're in the UK or if you're in Belgium, that's easy. But uh, I'm just going to throw this out. What, what would your all's opinion be? What if we had a competition, we have two, three winners, and you come down to Texas and you get you, you live a spend a week with Mike. I guarantee you we're going to fish salt water. Guarantee we'll go sailing at least once. And the third thing I want to do, and I'm not sure this is not politically correct, but here in Texas, there's a guy who owns tanks, World War II tanks. I think I've mentioned this before and I've been wanting to go and you can fire the cannons and everything. You know, they've got, uh, you know, German, uh, uh, Panzers, Panther tanks, Panzerkampfwagen, uh, uh, they've got um, American tanks and stuff like that. Would anybody enjoy doing that with me? I mean, get to wear a tank, get to wear a tank helmet, get to fire a cannon, boom. 
All right, well, somebody say it sounds fun. I don't know. I'm, think, I'm just thinking at this point. Just thinking. Two eleven p.m. Kobe forty two. Kobe forty two. Man, absolutely. Did Ceh a month? You did. You did Ceh a month ago. Passed. Excellent. Blueprint before was nasty. Right. Studied V ten. Got V eleven course questions. Man, Kobe. I, I got to tell you, I uh, I find. I don't want to say anything. Kobe, I'm sorry you're having trouble. I almost look at uh, the whole CEH thing as it's got organizational issues. Let's just leave it at that. Elbow just spends a few minutes with us every day. 12, 212. Got to leave at 1240. My time. And, um, all right, so Scott Jernigan and Dave Rush will do the show on Wednesday. That's great. Thank you, guys. I, I'm sorry, but I lost a dear family member, and I want to go. Um, yeah, and thank you, Andre. At least I get a sense of how far behind I am. Na, 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 na. Uh, Milos, can you guide me to where to learn more technical interview for creating cryptocurrency? No, uh, Milos, I mean, I can, I've can. i never done any Bitcoin mining on my own. Uh, I'm, okay, that's a lie. I did, but it was a long time ago using non-dedicated hardware. Uh, and it's just not something I get into. So, uh, Milos, but I got to tell you, Milos, this is the kind of question that you're asking because it's kind of outside of, of the Mike AMA, but it's still a fun question. And since I can't answer it easily, either A, someone's already answered it in line, or number two, uh, at Milos, this is something you should consider, join the Discord channel. So when on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, that's when you tend to get the most people, but people pop in and all the time. And uh, Milos, this is a good question to ask a broader audience uh, because I just, I don't have a lot of skill set there. Oh, no, I lost it. I lost, I lost where everybody is. I do this all the time. Uh. So what happens, guys, is the chat window doesn't scroll for me. It'll sit there, freeze up, and then I'll every, about every five or ten minutes goes, and then I have to scroll back to try to find where we are. And I, this has just been, this has been a hassle for a year, and I've never come up with a good answer how to deal with this. Other than you poor guys have to sit here and stare at me for a minute while I'm like, ah, I'm completely lost. I'm completely lost. Scott, where are we talking about? Uh, CPU ID. So Scott, CPU ID is good for actual amount of physical memory, but CPU ID doesn't do uh, like commit charge and stuff like that. Windows memory handling. Crazy homebody girl. 2.17 p.m. Firewall, DMZ, firewall, SSL, accelerator, load balancer, web server. According to all in one guide, this is the correct order to receive traffic when it's coming from the internet. Okay, crazy old body girl. First of all, I never said exactly that. However, crazy home body girl, why don't we look at this structurally and think about it, okay? So, firewall, DMZ firewall. Okay, so what we're doing here is you, you can't have, you should just say DMZ because firewall, two firewalls is a traditional old school DMZ. That's what it is. You have an edge router with some basic firewalling in it, mainly more stateful stuff. And then you usually have an interior one uh, with more stateless stuff in general. And in between these two are your public facing servers. Okay, so I, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say firewall DMZ firewall. If I'm setting up a traditional DMZ, I am probably going to have 
firewall and oh I'm and I'm supporting web servers so I probably have firewall uh, I guess it wouldn't matter really I could do I could do SSL accelerator first or load balancer for I guess I'd want to do SSL so I would do edge router I would do SSL I would do a load balancer I would have my web servers or whatever my public facing servers are then that's all in the DMZ. Then I would have my second firewall and that's the one that will be running NAT and everything that's going to be protecting my printers and everybody's desktop machine and that type of thing. You see a firewall because you usually you have public facing servers and that's what you're looking at the way you've described this to me crazy homebody girl uh, is that uh, SSL accelerator and a load balancer and a web server. God, it's so funny. Uh, firewall, SSL accelerator, load balancer, web server, second firewall. All of that's in the DMZ. Uh, 2.17 p.m. One more time, Scott. Sorry, buddy. Um, so crazy homebody girl. This is one of these things. Here, this, and I, 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 I don't mind calling you guys out a little bit, but I don't like to do it. But uh, I don't like to do it publicly. So crazy homebody girl, do me a favor. Send me an email, michaelm at totalsem.com, and tell me where I said that, because I don't think I did. But I may have. I may have. I do this stuff all the time. It looks like I missed a question. Yeah, AJ, sorry. Well, thank you for complimenting me. I, could, I completely didn't maul your name. I, I, AJ, I have a very hard problem with these Irish names, you know. <laughs> it's a joke. I'm kidding. It's a little humor. AJ. <laughs> Please don't be okay. I, mm -mm -mm -mm. I, okay, Gruber at 216. Nick preps a packet. Does the packet structure vary depending on delivery on land or outside land? Hang on. Does the packet structure vary depending on? So let's be real. So the answer is, make sure you understand the difference of an IP packet versus something like a uh, Ethernet uh, data frame, okay, or just an Ethernet frame. Your computer builds an IP packet, then it builds an Ethernet frame around it. IP packets do not exist by themselves. IP packets are always encapsulated in an Ethernet frame or a DOSIS frame or an ATM frame or whatever your layer two technology is. But the IP packet itself will always have a destination address. It will always have a source address. It'll always have your destination and source ports. That never changes with one exception. You guys ready? The one place it will change is when it goes through a NATed router because that IP packet will go through and the router will replace the internal private IP address with the WAN address of the router. And that's the, one of the very few times that the IP packet itself changes. The other place where an IP packet actually exists by itself is inside a router because once a frame comes into a router, all right, the first thing the router does, he rips all the Ethernet stuff off, just rips it off. Routers don't care, in general, where stuff comes from. Routing tables are used pretty much to, as a router's called, filter and forward, right? You know, so it forwards it based on usually destination IP information. But there is a little while in there where, you know, you have a stack of, of packets ready to be processed by the router. And it's not going to get a frame around it again until it gets shot out the door. Remember, routers have network cards in them too. So the moment it drops into a router's network card, it puts the Ethernet stuff or DOSIS stuff or ATM stuff or whatever technology you're deciding to use. So there we go. This is a good question. Thank you, Gruber. I've got to, I got to say, guys, Gruber Accountancy is doing a good job with questions. I do enjoy them. Oh, I missed Kim Jong Oof too. God, I'm so sorry I missed so many things. I didn't miss too much. Kim Jong Oof, good to see you again, Kim Jong. Uh, hey, Grandpa Mike. Grandpa Mike. Uh, I'll let you get away with it because, well, I'm old. Uh, 
did a fairly good uh, uh, by, oh sorry we're gonna go keep trying Uh, should I learn what you have on Udemy or more than that? Every, uh, I cover all the ports. My videos cover every single port. So you're in good shape there. Tell you the other thing you should be able to do, and this is good practice. You should be able to reach around the back of a desktop computer and recognize all the ports just by touch. Do you need that to pass a CompTIA exam? No, but I think to be a good tech, you know, you should be able to you know, just hold something. I used to do these competitions for the kids, and one of them was uh, try to bust Mike, and they would have all these different parts and uh, see if they could ever get a connector type that I couldn't recognize. And no, you can't. <laughs> yeah, I'm that good. Okay, so here we go. Anyway, back to crazy home body girl got you covered at least for the moment. Vilo Belev, there he is at 218. You're an amazing teacher. You're an amazing student. Zach Morrill. It's Zach, for some reason, you're chatty today online. You're chatty when we get on uh, Discord, but it's good to see you. I'm happy. I'm glad, good. Jason Elms, Scott Jernigan's teaching everybody. Is, is CPU ID that? Okay, I've got another question. You guys ready? I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. All right, here we go. Here's my question. Until Scott Jernigan mentioned uh, CPU ID, how many people just learned about CPU ID today? Just raise your hand or don't raise your hand. Just say me. Just type this in right now, please. If you just learned about CPU ID today, please go ahead and just type in uh, like me, M-E. Okay. All right, well, good. I mean, it's not a problem. I'm always glad to do like a discussion on CPU ID. Milos is new. Al Mulford. Al, I know you knew it. Hey, you guys, Al Mulford. That's my brother-in-law, and he's a pilot, and he's a nut, too. Uh, Aaron started. Hey, Aaron. Okay. That's fine. Thank you, guys. That was very helpful. Let me scroll. <laughs> okay. Let's get back to it. Um, Twisting Puma at 219. Hi, Mike. Just started my first day today. Yeah. Working. Working. Doing A+. Do you think I should have done A+, first? No. Always get a job first. Always get a job first. Always get a job first. Now, if you straight up are running into a lot of jobs that say, we won't hire you without an A+, well, you're probably, first of all, going for too hard of a job initially. Entry-level jobs. Entry-level jobs, help desk, sales. I mean, th these are the jobs everybody starts with. Everybody does, guys. We all do. All right? So just do it. Certifications are what move you up. Certifications are what gets your foot in the door. Certifications are what, what puts your CV at the top of a stack. Never, ever go through life going, oh, I'm going to get like five certifications, and then I'm going to get a job. No, that is a bad thing to do. You, we work. Certification should be studied at the nights and on the weekends. Or if you're on a help desk, then you should be doing it between calls. <laughs> but Twisting Puma, congratulations. Sabotage FBS, is there a passport for the A-plus exam? Yes, there is. Absolutely there is. And if so, is that 50, no, uh, sabotage, uh, no, the, the uh, discounts only last for the week that we talk about them. So sorry. We actually, I don't think we're going to be able to give away, uh, we can give away books. I don't think we're going to be able to do discount boots, uh, d discount books because there was a little problem. You know.
Crazy Homebody Girl, 2.20 p.m. You've already booked for May 1st? Good for you. I am 40 minutes behind. Guys, I'm going to speed up a little bit because I don't know why I'm running so slow here. Kobe42, sand is even easier. You outsource it. High five to you, Kobe. Everybody's talking about... Oh, I didn't even see it. Jen, I passed my 1001. Jen, you rock. You're amazing. We will sing songs about you around the campfires. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Jane Slayer, you've never seen me with five pots of coffee. Techno Viking, three, 226. I took your course with med certs. Pass my plus. Great. Tech Viking, well done. Tech Viking, what's your next step? Where are you going now? Are you working? Get a job. Nigel, already got you made so hot with that song. Yeah, sorry, Nigel. And it's still stuck in my head. Either that or the song of the Volga Boatman. You don't know the song of the Volga Boatman? Well, I'm not going to sing it for you. Get Scott Jernigan. Scott Jernigan's the good singer around here. I got to tell you guys a true story about me and Scott Jernigan, all right? This was a few years ago, about 10 years ago. Uh, it was the last time Scott and I went to New York City. McGraw-Hill, who publishes our books, uh, was in, uh, in New York City in Manhattan. And uh, Scott is a very, very good singer, guys. He, he's very shy, but Scott is an amazing singer. And uh, old, old music, you know, like uh, Irish drinking songs and that kind of thing. Anyway, and I can carry a note in a bucket. Ends up, we're hanging out with two executives from McGraw-Hill who can also sing. So we got four of us, we, not barbershop quartet, but, you know, kind of doing some harmonies and stuff. We're sounding pretty good. And we're in the middle of Midtown Manhattan in some bar. And we're all singing, like we're all facing each other. We're not blowing every out. Anyway, uh, what's his name from The Sopranos? James Gandolfini? Do you remember Tony Soprano? Here's Scott singing away, la, la, la. you know, Scott's all expressive, and whiskey in the jar and all this. Anyway, James, James Gandolfini, I think that was his name, right? He was not a small man, all right? And he's standing up behind Scott, and we're all like, da, 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 da. and here's James Gandolfini just staring over Scott's head, and Scott's singing away, and he just goes and walks on. Uh, true stories. Total seminars eclipse of the heart. Thank you, Tolowit. Gruber Accountancy 228. Can't find a security plus. You mentioned thumb drives that can be inserted. <coughs> oh, you want to know, um, Scott, oh, come on guys, help me out. Who makes the, um, uh, Little thumb drive. It's actually a. It, it can do keyboard captures. It can do. Uh, Hack five sells them. H A K five. I mean, you can make your own, but. Uh, oh, here we go. Hang on. No, 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 no. I started closing windows very quickly. All right, here, let me show this to you guys while I got it up here. Da -da -da -da. So this is, a, uh, this is called Hack 5. And they sell quite a few fun toys. So hak5.org, and they're surprisingly inexpensive. So this is what they call the USB rubber ducky, which is probably their most famous toy. And it looks like just a USB thumb drive, but it can actually, well, it's designed to insert payloads. So if you can get up to a USB and plug this in, you can do lots of naughtiness. As seen on Mr. Robot. How's that? Yeah. So Hack 5 has a lot of fun tools. There's, there'll be no quizzing about that type of stuff. Other than, like on Security Plus, it's like, why is it a good idea to always turn off USB ports? And that's why. Kevin Lopez, there he is, 229. Here, I'm speeding up to get caught up. 
Diamond pressure make diamonds. That's me, William Jeske. Looking for questions, kids. Tom Jeffrey, anyone watch the Snyder Cut? I don't even know what that is. Is this going to be something I wish I'd watched? Oh, God, Justice League. <laughs> no, thanks. Tom Jeffrey, you enjoy, my friend. Yeah, we are getting a lot of passes today, aren't we, Dave Rush? That's very exciting. Uh, 2.34 p.m. Yeah, I got it. It's got Justice League. <laughs> uh. Meanwhile, Justice League headquarters, Aquaman. That's the old one. Rodney Amy Jr. Hey, it's, he's in California. Kim Jong Oof. Anyone know what the hardest part in A plus? The hardest part? Writing a check for that much money to for a test you may not pass. <laughs> it is. Uh. Yeah, it's going to Aaron Stare at 236. Been a while since I've watched the live stream. Aaron's been a while, but I remember you. It's good to see you again, man. Uh, 236, Guru Chaz. I am currently working as a desktop engineer's hospital. Good man. Guru, I got it. Guru Chaz here. Your courses help me pass A plus, net plus, but even though this job pays very well, I feel like I'm more of a glorified delivery boy than actually fixing problems. Well, I can tell you a little trick, Guru, that you might want to consider. And that is, I'm not, sure, I'm not saying this will work for you, but it might be something, because I've done this. Where I've had jobs where I felt that I was underemployed, and that sounds like what you're telling me here, I just started volunteering within the company to start helping people. If I saw people that had... It was this thing called a Rolodex. It was an office equipment of your forefathers. You used to write your like information on little cards and they'd spin. If I saw somebody at the Rolodex, I'd like show them how to use Excel to start loading stuff like that in or building database stuff. But basically what I'm telling you is you can quickly become what I call a user advocate where if, if you're underemployed and you've got time, starting to help people out can really make a big difference in terms of... Uh, Helping productivity within the company. And the other thing you could do, Guru Chas, and this we do it all the time, and you're doing it here too. I'm getting a bit burned out after several years, but looking into security. And that's the other thing we do. It is all good. Twisting Puma. There we go. Mm -hmm. Kevin Lopez, what gave you the confidence to start Total Seminars? It was never a matter of confidence. It was just a matter of, well, number one, I am so obnoxious that I'm really not allowed to work for anybody because I've tried it and it's pretty embarrassing when your coworkers shove your head in the toilet twice a day, uh, even though you deserved it. Um, I just never really thought about anything else. I've been an entrepreneur my whole life, Kevin. I mean, I've had some regular jobs, but I just, I just think of stuff to do and then I do it. I, it's, uh, there's not a whole lot, there's not a whole lot of thought going into this, to be honest. In fact, if I thought about it, I'd probably never have done it. That pushed me. Uh, was there any specific thing? Yeah, when I was 12 years old, I lived in horrific, abject poverty, and I had to learn how to make money a long time ago, and I've just kept at it ever since. I'm just lucky now I get to play with computers while I'm making money. Azuzo Mascad, Mike, you are the best IT teacher ever I found. Huh? Best IT teacher. And the most humble, and the best looking. And the most hair. Shut up. Mm. Twisting Poom. Oh, God, not more UK people. Twisting Poom's in the UK. Uh, 2.39 p.m. Where can we purchase Jernigan's? I'm not even going to bother trying to figure out what that means. 
you guys get your little side conferences going in there and Tolowitz invariably in there. Yep, there he is. No big surprise there. Uh, Jane Slayer at 239. Mike, you should start a Texas-based IT conference. Def Con for Tex. Taco Con. Oh, now you got me thinking Shaka Con. Shaka Con with the baby. Fee for you, cause I love you. Would love see Jason, there we go. Wow. Okay, some people would like to fire a cannon out of a tank. A real functioning World War II tank. Might, I don't know. I'll see if we come up with something. The problem is I want something that everybody can do. And no offense. I mean, unless you're in like mo I guess the EU works. You never know, guys. We'll see what we can do. Just a thought. Vista Chris, sign me up. Uh, 239, Cheeky Willie. Total seminar convention. I like that. Tom Jeffrey, Mike, fly me out of the UK. Hello, can the wife come? Please say no. No, Tom, I'm sorry, but we really can't bring your wife along. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that, bud. Uh, drinking so much easier without a spouse. Okay, um, uh, 239, Georgie Genev. If I get the two, 1001 and the 1002, the A+, plus, and they renew, and they renew... No, Georgie, you should not. Uh, Georgie, do me a favor. I need you to get on YouTube. Don't do it right now, but look up Mike's Ten Commandments. It's an old video. It's like 10 years old. But, uh, or Mike Myers' Ten Commandments. And it's just the 10 things that all nerds need to do. And one of the things I talk about in this is uh, unless you just keep doing <clears throat> the same job for years and years, I don't believe in refreshing any certification. Yes, of course, CompTIA would love to get your money every three years. But I gotta be honest with you, to me, Things like A+, plus, Net+, plus, and Security+, plus are really entry-level certifications. And, uh, you know, you should be looking to move on towards, you know, more advanced certifications. I would be far more happy for you to be getting more advanced certifications than going back for the old ones. Now, look, there's exceptions to that rule, okay? Uh where some people do need to keep updated, but in general, I think you should be moving onward and upward. That's my call, Georgie. Gruber Accountancy, want a trip to barbecue? You want good barbecue? Do you guys want amazing barbecue? I'll get you good barbecue. I know my barbecue. Patricia Grace is in. All right. <laughs> Eric Killingsworth. I want to pop my head out of the turret and say, I'm literally in a tank right now, and you're not. I worry sometimes. Some people are like anti-gun stuff, and I just, I don't want to do something that makes somebody nervous. Jane Slayer, I'd go to Houston just for the food. Uh, when, when is that? 240. Jane, you know something that most people don't. Houston is a gastronomical paradise. People forget that Houston is a wildly diverse city. And uh, everybody thinks it's all barbecue and Mexican food. And while there's plenty of both of those, uh, Houston has, a, when it comes to food, and I've lived in New York City, I've been to Los Angeles a thousand times, been to Chicago, uh, been to London many times. Uh, I can't come up with another city on earth, maybe Paris, and that would be primarily because of all the wonderful French food, uh, that has the food that Houston does. Houston is... You know, anybody who comes visit me, you're going to gain 10 pounds, whether you like it or Sorry, you're going to gain, uh, I can do this. You're going to gain 22 kilograms. Or did I divide it? I forget. Whatever. But yeah, the food here is amazing. It's almost too good is the problem.
Okay, uh, so Gruber, it looks like you retyped a earlier question, uh, 240. In your Security Plus, you mentioned the thumb drive can be inserted into an unattended host. I've shown you that. Those were the uh, rubber duckies from Hack5. Keep in mind, Hack5 is only one company that makes tools like this. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Just looking for questions, guys. Guru Chaz, am I in the wrong chat? I don't know. I'm a little behind today. I am sorry, guys. I'm usually not this, I'm running a good 30 minutes behind on questions. Literally, the questions that you typed in 30 minutes ago, I'm just getting to. So I'm trying to move a little faster. Henai uh, Ganatra, Ganatra, like Sinatra, but with a G. Hey, Mike, hey, man. Uh, 246, Eris Watson. What is the majority of the info needed to pass Networking Plus? RS, the majority of the info is stored beautifully in the wonderful video series made by Mike Myers, popular author. Also might want to consider the Mike Myers Network Plus book and Total Seminars Test Banks to practice. With those three items, you will definitely cover the vast majority of everything you need to know for the Network Plus. Good, good, good attempt, though. And I get not trust. Has anyone seen a folder in their user profile called k.k? Uh, well, it says VM store, which warns me right there. It's almost certainly virtual machine storage. I've never seen one quite like that, and I, but it looks like somebody in your organization is making these uh, folder names. So you have roaming profiles almost guaranteed, but uh, that is not a common or standard thing. So, head out. Have you tried taking this? Here, I'll do it for you. K.KMVM store. Let's take that and do a search on it. Let's see what comes up. There you go. Oh, boy. <laughs> So my first search came up. Oh, here, I'll show you guys. It's funny. At least we can all laugh together a little bit here. All right, so I just did a quick search. I did a uh, search for KMVM store. Got that. This Reddit post pops up. Oh, wait a minute. What's this? Hmm. This is on a Mac. I don't know, but that, this is the search. Nothing instantly popped up. But the thing is, I'm not going to sit here over this AMA and just read, you know, 30 different articles that, because I guarantee you one of them has it in there right. Um, how does a packet frame change? as it travels from one router to another. Okay, so you have two routers that it's ethernet, okay? So you have ethernet. So this router, the, well, sorry, uh, your home, home machine, and it's got a wired connection, say, so it sends out an ethernet. The ethernet goes into your home router. That home router has an ethernet connection coming to one side and a, uh, a RG59. RG6 coaxial, right? Because it's cable television, right? It's a cable, but that, that's called DOSIS, D-O-C-S-I-S. -S. So when it comes out of the router and into that DOSIS, it's got a completely different, there's still the IP packet in there, but it's got a DOSIS frame, which isn't Ethernet. They're not all, they're not the same. Some are very similar. Like for example, 802.11 wireless frames are pretty similar to Ethernet frames. They're not identical, but they're pretty similar. So, uh, but that, that's, how it, that's how that happens. Uh, Tolwit, have you tried pop out chat? That's all I do, Tolwit, is I always keep it in, in pop out. It doesn't seem to help much. Uh, 
Eris, why, why does the A-plus have two separate exams? Hey, Eris, at one time, you, you could have up to seven different exams on the A-plus. I am not kidding. When I first started with the A-plus, they had a computer hardware, then it had a Macintosh, and then a Windows PC. So you took the core exam, then you took one of the two. That's how it started. And here we're talking about late 90s, just to give you an idea. And it's just gone through a lot of different iterations. A lot of people say the reason it's two exams is because CompTIA gets to charge you double. <laughs> I would hope that's not the truth, but I cannot say it isn't. Eris um, mm -hmm. Watson, talk about subnetting, please. Eris, I'm going to do better than talk about subnetting. Eris, here in the Total Seminars channel, right here, okay, we have a number of courses that we've already done. So here in YouTube, here in the Total Seminars channel, right at the top, you can search and just do subnetting, and it will show you the courses we've already discussed it in, Eris. So uh, those are there for you. And do keep in mind that the idea is that you study this, and then you come back here and ask more questions. Mike, I didn't quite understand how you took a WAC 25 and turned it into a 27. You get the idea? But Eris, we have gr in grinding detail right here for free at the, at the Total Seminars channel. Just load them up. And uh, I think that Eris, you'll be very, very happy with those results. And that's all the talking about subnetting I'm going to do today. Mm. Ooh, da, da, da. Andrew Hutz? Who's Andrew Hutz? Andrew Hutz, you owe me $3. Guru Chaz at 306. I live just south of Fort Worth. You live just south of Fort Worth. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, Guru Chaz, I live in downtown Houston pretty much. People are always welcome. Well, I got to be careful. I, 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 uh, I don't know what to do about the COVID thing. The one nice thing about being here in uh, Texas is that we've already got 25% of the people vaccinated, which is impressive. But then there's got to be a magic point. And I, I am not one to sit here and listen to when the Center for Disease Control or whatever says it's good. But on the same token, I'm not going to allow arbitrary politicians to tell me to not wear a mask when it's obviously we're still getting a thousand uh, cases a day in the Houston, Texas area. So the idea is to mix some balance in there. So I'm figuring we got about three, four more weeks. Hopefully we'll see one more big drop and this Corona is going to be out the door and I'm going to start loosening up. I'm injected. Pretty much everybody around here has got the vaccinations. Uh, so, I, you know, you just got to make a guess. Everybody can just sit and hide in their house like we've been doing for a year. And when people are, there's 15,000 cases per day in the Texas area alone, yeah, I'm going to sit in my house. I'm going to be very happy to do it. But as things start to mellow out, I'm, I'm more of an independent type. And uh, so we'll see. And yes, I know all the arguments, guys. Let's not, I, I shouldn't even have brought that up. But that's going to help me decide when I'm going to be able to start seeing people again and have some fun. Like Guru Chaz. Did I miss another pass? Nicholas Pratt, I can't find you. Somebody says you passed. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. At 303, took my name, got a 730. Good Lord, that's a great score. Yeah. Well done, Nicholas Pratt. Big round of applause to you. Well, well done. Gruber County, any hits on the barbecue scene there? My house. Dun, 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 dun. Rodney Amy Jr. at 308. Get out of the tank. You're not my dad. You're not my supervisor. I don't think you can rent machine guns any place that I go to. The gun ranges I go to, semi-automatic, but not gun ranges. $40 plus ammo. Yeah. That's where they get you these days. It's ammunition is so expensive. Ridiculous. All right, I right, can stop talking about Texas things. Let's get back to computing. 
Looking for questions. Uh, Samir at 3.12 p.m. Do you have server plus? I don't think we do, no. Uh, Samir, it just never really took off as a certification, you know. <laughs> Guru Chaz at 3.12. So, when you get to this message, yes, you already answered my question. I appreciate it. Guru Chaz, that is incredibly helpful. Thank you. Especially when I'm getting a little behind like this. Andrew Hutz, would it be feasible to build two PCs in one big case? One is a gaming ring, the other is an NAS and run them through the same power supply? Yes, you could do that. Uh, the power supply would be a little bit tricky because you'd have to have a power supply that's designed to feed two motherboards. Uh, but I think it could be done. The, the, the stronger question I would have is, why would you do that? I mean, if, if, you've, got, uh, if you've got that kind of firepower, uh, then I would just say, build a uh, RAID array in there on a standalone. Da -da -da -da. Uh, Aris Watson, 317, can you explain TCP IP versus OSI? Oh God, yes, I can do this. Okay, let's start with the easy one, which is OSI. First of all, Aris, do you understand why we have models? Models are, whether it's a fashion model or a model airplane, what you're trying to do is create a representation, a simplified representation of the real thing that allows people to work together. And if you have a, a fashion model, then people who design clothes can make clothes that fits on and looks good on humans. If you have a model airplane, you can, uh, you can look at a model airplane and you know, decide is that small enough to fit on our aircraft carrier or whatever it might be, all right? With networking, the goal of a networking model is to show what are the primary functions of a network, of networking software and, and interfaces to get things done. The OSI seven layer model uh, was invented a long, long time ago. And there are some problems with the OSI seven layer model. For example, layer six, the presentation layer, doesn't really exist anymore. So when you hear people describe the OSI seven layer model and they get to the presentation layer, we start talking about things like, you know, PDF files that are easily read by a bunch of different sources. So the presentation layer doesn't make as much sense. Also, the OSI was designed to work with lots of different protocols. You know, we always talk about TCP IP because that's the dominant protocol right now. But you go back 15 years ago, we had NetBuoy, NetBias, we had Apple Talk, we had IPX, SPX, we had all these other protocols, and that's where the OSI really worked well. But now that we live in more of a TCP IP world, a lot of people have simplified the OSI uh, model and break it down in either to a four or a five step model. Um, I don't wanna do it right here because I'll probably mess it up. I can do OSI in my head, been a while since I've done TCP. I can tell you this, Wikipedia has a fascinating article on all the different networking models. There are quite a few. Um, uh, you don't need to know about any of them but the OSI. I keep the TCP IP model in my Network Plus book primarily because it's the way a lot of people talk today. And yeah, it's not on the Network Plus. It used to be they took it off, I don't care. Guys, remember, when I write a book, I'm just not writing a book to tell you what's on the exam. If I'm writing anything, it's because it meets one of four criteria. Number one, it's on the exam. Okay, that's a good reason. But number two, and this is more important to me, that is, it's gonna make you a good tech. And you should be able to talk TCP IP uh, even though it's not on the exam. Like, I don't have any practice questions on TCP IP model, because it's not on the exam. Uh, well, okay, there's four reasons. Number two, number three. Oh, number three is CIC or because it's cool because sometimes there's just something that's neat and it's sparkly, you know, and you're like, here, look at this piece of technology. That's the third reason. And the fourth reason is weird, but it's an important one. Sometimes I have to teach people about things they don't need to know about. 
because if I don't talk about it, they get crabby at me. Uh, talking about uh, three-way versus four-way set associative RAM caches, like your level one, level two, you know, Intel and AMD make very different caches in their CPUs. And there's stuff like that that I have to at least mention because otherwise people be like, well, what about this? You know, so. so those are the four things I talk about. Uh, I don't know. Blue Deck 319 passed my core one last Friday. Good man. Good person. Joe Foy, what is your opinion of the CEH versus OSCP? Uh, Joe, I got to tell you, I'm a little bit down on uh, EC Council these days. Uh, I think they're just too expensive. I think they have good exams. I'm not going to say the certifications are bad, but CEH is like, I mean, if you do their training and everything like that, it could cost set you back three grand uh, if you're not careful or more. So, um, I, I, Joe, I'm going to tell you that I'm just not a big fan of CEH. Uh, in fact, if I was going to be doing a certification these days, I'd probably go for Pentest Plus. And it's not that I'm some CompTIA fanboy. Trust me, guys, I'm not. Uh, if CompTIA ever started doing a bad job, I can call McGraw-Hill up and they'll let me write books on anything I want. But what I will tell you is that the Pentest Plus is a challenging exam. It is. It's harder than CEH, but it's a lot cheaper, and I think it tests you better. My opinion. Andrew Hutz, man, doing good. Look at you. Online bachelor's, good enough. You know, hey, bachelor's is a bachelor's, Andrew. You're doing great. Wife's working. He's got a, Andrew Hutz has to wear shades, man. Future's bright. Uh, Samir Stevo, OS duplication on several hard drives. Any recommendations? Ghost, good old Norton's Ghost for uh, replicating, uh, for duplicating anything. Ghost does an amazing job. And a matter of fact, if you want to talk about Ghost, uh, Dave Rush is your guy. Dave Rush is our ghost guru. Uh, like a lot of times when we're teaching uh, instructor-led classes and so we have to disperse out to a bunch of different laptops or whatever, we use ghost. That's it. Sied Hussain. Hello, Mike. In terms of security, which is more secured? Port forwarding or port triggering? They are equally good or bad. Uh, so Syed, when you, Syed Hussein at 323, uh, why do you ask me that question? See, cause I'm thinking Syed's found, he's doing some practice questions, you know, and he's sitting there, he runs across a question and Syed, I'm just guessing here. So if I'm way off, ignore me. In terms of security, which is more secured, port forwarding or port triggering? Let me think about that for a minute. more secured. I mean, they've done kind of the same way. They're both going to take anybody who's coming in on those port numbers. I can't say one or the other. I guess if you were to force me to say one or the other, I might say port trigger. And even that, I got to think about that a little bit. Hey guys, so see Scott Jurgen reposted the AMA special for this week. 50% off all CompTIA totals tester bundles, practice test Okay, so guys, got to be careful here. Scott Jernigan is saying that uh, our uh, that our special is including the videos. So we got to be careful here. Any bundle. So Scott, I'm going to challenge you here a little bit. You can do a practice test and Sims bundle, and you also get that 50% off. You don't have to get the videos as well.
Yeah, Nigel. Uh, again, Nigel, we're uh, we're working on it. 3:25 p.m. But Nigel, one more time, there is no reason to take the Security Plus 601. Take the 501. Nobody cares what what test you take. They just want to know if you're Security Plus certified. The 601's only been out for a couple of months now. Still learning about it. So that is my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. All right, so Patricia Grace 329 has said something I'm a little confused on. I mean, I'm, I'm picking up part of a conversation. The question was why there's there no warning about data loss resetting a password using data loss resetting a password using some NDA. I, Patricia, I don't understand what you're asking me here. Or maybe I missed something earlier. Patricia, try again, babe. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not understanding. Or you can save it for the Discord. Uh, no, you can't. I'm not going to be on Discord today. I, I can't do it. So, uh, But there's other guys who could answer that for you. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a little confused by what you're saying there. I never believed in mentorship. Why would we need it when we have this? This is all we need. There we go. Nigel, do whatever you want to do. I, I think uh, that it is a mistake when you can take an older exam to take the newer exam. That's my opinion. The training materials are new. What do you want, Kat? Kitty. Ugh. Cat's disgusting. Old, 19-year-old cat. When you get when you reset a pass, a you. When you reset a password, local user in computer management, you get a warning about data loss. Uh, I think, yeah, Patricia, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, because if you can't, uh, Patricia, if you can't, uh, if you don't remember the right password or if you put it in wrong, then you're in big trouble. Nigel, are we doing a Discord chat after this? There will be a Discord chat after this, Nigel. Unfortunately, I won't be able to attend today. Uh, Kevin Lopez, is anyone here excited to see the new Matrix movie? Kevin, they only made one Matrix movie, so why would they ever make another one? Right? They only made one Matrix movie. Because if they made other ones, then they would have been terrible. All right, guys, looks like it's starting to slow down here a little bit, which is good. Yeah, about an hour and a half. Um, guys, do remember, this is the only time you're going to see me this week, unfortunately. I've got, uh, I'm not going to be... <coughs> Hairball. Uh, I'm not going to be able to uh, be here on Wednesday, but Dave and Scott will be running things as they do so competently and well. Um, what else we got going? Don't forget Dave Rush uh, this Friday for the drama. Dave Rush, AMA drama. Uh, what are you doing? Docker. Jeez, Dave, you're going to do Docker? Woof. So, Kevin Lopez, is there really a new Matrix movie coming out? That's crazy. Uh, Majidi Daifa, how do I make a schedule for CompTIA A+. Well, first of all, if you're using my books, I have the entire introduction of my book is to help you get a plan organized. It helps you test yourself to know where your skill sets are, and then you can set to determine how many hours you need to study. Once you determine the number of hours you need to study, you then have to say, well, how much can I study? You know, uh, I need 220 hours of study to become A-plus certified, according to um, Mike Myers. So maybe you could only study 10 hours a week. Well, that being the case, then you've got 22 weeks before you can take the exam. So that is really about the first thing you, you got to do uh, is make sure that... Uh, You've got uh, the time scheduled, and you go out and, and you, you take the exam. You know, I think, here, Scott Jernigan, I got an idea. This might be something I might do on the side. I don't know. Like, because uh, I get these questions all the time, and they are good questions. 
They are very, very good questions that are more like the soft skills. How do I study and things like that? Um, so, Majdi, I'm going to, let me think about that a little bit. I'm going to make like a little video. It's like the, the 12 steps that you need to do. Ba -ba -ba -boom. There's a new John Wick also. Good Lord. Uh, Tech Viking. Now I have A plus, Net plus, Security plus, and, and I'm CCNA. Tech Viking, at this point, with those certifications, you should start having some sense of what you want to do. You should have a feeling of where your passions are, what's interesting. Have you looked into uh, cloud uh, for work? I'm not talking about certification. I'm talking about work. Do you want to get into cloud stuff? Um, do you want to become a great uh, Cisco head? We need you more than ever. You got a CCNA, you know, why don't you go for the CCNP next? Um, so that would be the, the question I'd have for you, Tech Viking. I can't tell you what to do next. Your desires and your passions lead you. You have taken A plus, Net plus, Security plus, which to me are the core certifications that help you begin to decide which direction you want to go. And here's the other thing, you can be wrong, right? You can be, trust me when I tell you. You can be wrong, you end up spending three, four years going on a path and you're, uh, oh shoot, contest. Thank you, Scott, I forgot I was gonna, said I was gonna have a contest today. Um, but, uh, and, and then you're wrong, you just pick another path, it, it's okay. All right, I did, I forgot um, that I did say we were gonna do some competition. So let's go ahead, we're gonna do two quick competitions and then we're gonna call it a day. All right, so let's do, do, do. Mm -hmm. So I'm scrolling up some questions. Okay guys, so get ready, Here, here's the competition, you ready? So to do a competition here, number one, the competition is not fair. Okay, every now and then somebody feels like they get ripped off. I'm sorry, it happens, okay? Uh, that's number one. Number two, uh, we've got a few minutes today. I was gonna say, if you compete, you're gonna get the prize. Because uh, a lot of people here come back time and time again, and they just like to have fun competing. They don't even want the prize, and they'll pass them. We will allow prize passing today. S-A-M-L, who put that? Kevin Lopez, funny. Okay, uh, so the, the other thing is, is we're gonna do multiple choice questions. You can't write down A, B, C, or D. You actually have to write down the answer. You'll be able to see them, so don't panic, uh, but uh, you have to write those. So, I am scrolling through looking for an interesting question. So I'm just looking, I'm looking for a practice question that's fun. Ooh, I hate that question. Ooh, you guys ready? Here, here we go. You guys ready? Here's the first one. Get ready, guys. First person to write the answer down that I like wins. You are working in your building's network communication closet and notice a cable with the number 62.5 slash 125 hooked up to your switch. What kind of cable did you just run across? What kind of cable? Only one kind of cable does uh, 62.5 125. I'm giving everybody a chance. Again, folks, just because you see a lot of other people's answers, keep in mind that the order I see questions in is very different. All right, let's see if we got an answer. We do have an answer here. Remember, Vista Chris, you can never just type in the letter. In fact, you don't have to type in the letter at all. I just want the answer. All right, so let's take a look at this. I'm pretty sure the right answer is multi-mode fiber. 
Let's use the assistant window, check my answer. Answer C is correct. You betcha. So the right answer is multi-mode. And the first person who put in multi-mode was Jason Helms. All right, so Jason Helms, congratulations to you, sir. You won. You get a choice of either A+, plus, Net+, plus, or uh, Security Plus practice questions. This is not, unfortunately, does not include the performance-based questions, just the multiple choices. Uh, in order to claim your prize, uh, who, who did I say? I forgot already. Ah, Jason Helms. There we go. Uh, so, Jason, in order to claim your prize, you have to send an email to Kathy Y. That's Kathy with a K, K-A-T-H-Y-Y at totalsem.com. Don't panic. Scott Jernigan's putting all this in the chat window. Make sure you let her know what your screen name is on YouTube. You have to put in there, hi, uh, this is, why am I having, this is Jason Helms, and I want the Network Plus, or whatever it might be, and uh, it'll be sent to you. So it's an online product, so it, it works perfectly this way. All right. Mm. Uh, Kevin Lopez, that's a Network Plus question, right? Yes, it's a Network Plus. Is it okay that I do Network Plus? Is that type of question in Security Plus 501? No. But in Security Plus, it will talk about multi-mode in one way or another. Is it okay that I'm doing Network Plus? I thought Network Plus would be fun. In fact, it's so much fun, I want to do it one more time. And in fact, let's keep it decabling because I got another good one up here. You guys ready? Here's the second and last competition question for today. And on this one, it's another cabling question. It's a good one though. Good question. You guys ready? Here we go. Pen's ready. An F-type connector is most typically used on which of the following? T1 CSU DSUs, B cable modems, 10 base 5 NICs, or Ethernet router? Pick one, guys. Ah, oh, this one was too easy. Way too easy. Uh, all right. Yeah, you guys all got it right. All right, we have a winner. And I say it's cable modems. Let me just triple check and make sure that's legit. Okay, yay. My, aren't those nice practice questions? They sure are. That's what you guys are competing for is that interface. We have a winner and the winner is my man Frank. Cable modem, that's right. F-type connector is a screw type connector for coaxial cable and that is what we call it. So well done, Frank, you rock. You are the winner of the second and last competition for today. Frank, in order to get your prize, you need to send an email to Kathy Y, that's Kathy with a K, K-A-T-H-Y-Y -Y, at totalsem.com. Make sure your name is in there. Make sure you're, oh wait, Frank just passed. Hold on, hold on, Frank passed. Ugh. All right, Andrew Hutz. All right, Andrew, you gonna take it? I'm gonna wait this time. Andrew, you want it or not? Say something, no, no, Scott Jernigan, Frank passed, Frank passed. Andrew Hutz. Going once. Ah, all right, here we go again. All right, third is Jimmy Milligan. All right, Jimmy, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna gamble that you're the winner. Jimmy Milligan, congratulations, you are the winner of the second prize today. In order to claim your prize, all you have to do is send an email to Kathy Y at totalsem.com. Make sure you put your name in there, your YouTube name, Jimmy Milligan. Also make sure that you tell her what you want, A+, plus, Net+, plus, or Security+, plus. those are your three choices. And uh, congratulations to you, well done. All right, 344, I think we've done pretty good for the day. Um, one for Sec+. Plus. So Nigel, you do understand that if you had won this contest, you could have asked for a Security Plus test. Oh, I just wanted to compete. Uh, Mothered Animal, when is the next live session? Mothered Animal, I'm on every Monday and Wednesday right here on YouTube on the Total Seminars channel. That's two o'clock Central Daylight Time. Uh, 
on Mondays and Wednesdays. On Fridays, we have Dave Rush. Uh, Dave Rush is uh, an employee of Total Seminars and a good friend and a good tech. Dave Rush does a lot of things on Fridays, concentrating on the Raspberry Pi. Now you'd think, well, Mike, I'm not interested in Raspberry Pi. I'm studying for Security Plus. Well, that's good because Dave Rush primarily uses the Raspberry Pi as a very, very cheap platform to do a lot of A+, plus, Net+, plus, and Security Plus stuff. Cool, huh? So it's uh, very, very good. All right, so guys, that's all I've got. Again, I cannot get on. This is all you're going to see me this week. I will be back on Monday. The guys will be here. Come here, kitty. Come here. Want to see the cat? Let's see if I can actually pick her up. Come here. Come here. Come here, kitty. This scruffy little thing is little bit. She's 19 years old. She's an old kitty. There you go. Oopsie. It's just a mouse. All right, guys, I'm out of here. I will see you guys on Monday. Have a great week, and uh, I'll see you on Monday. Bye, guys. I can't turn off the live stream without a mouse. <laughs> okay, all right.